Good morning, my name is Carissa Wright and I serve at Coastal Community Church and this week as we continue the series on values I will be talking about the value of servanthood and I want us to briefly look at why we should serve, what the heart of a servant looks like and how serving God leads us into his divine purposes for our lives. So let's look at the Bible. In John 13 verses 12 to 17. So when Jesus had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord and you say, well, for so I am. If I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. And if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And it was by taking the form of a servant and the act of washing the disciples' feet that Jesus teaches us and models for us the importance and the command of servanthood. He commissions us to serve one another. If I then have washed your feet, Jesus said, you also ought to wash one another's feet. So we are to serve one another because Jesus has told us that this is what we must do. And with what heart attitude are we to serve one another? We serve each other with a humble heart because this is what Jesus did. He was the disciples teacher and Lord yet he stooped down before them taking on one of the lowest forms of servitude to wash their feet. So Jesus teaches us that we are to serve one another. We are to imitate him and be humble towards each other because Jesus, being their teacher and Lord, shows that at the very heart of good leadership is humility. And what is humility? Humility is the opposite to pride. A humble person is not self-seeking or self-glorifying. They are selfless. They are meek and have the correct estimation of themselves. You see, pride and humility will fight with one another to be master in your life. So we need to ask God by the power of the Holy Spirit to create in us a humble heart and to help us to maintain a humble heart. And once we have allowed the Holy Spirit to deal with any pride in our hearts, then we have come to a place where God will use us more and more to advance his kingdom on earth by our servitude as we imitate Christ in servanthood. And a humble person will serve God wherever the need is. They see the need in an area to serve where there is a shortfall and they serve there. They see the need and they step in because they are not seeking a place of honour or recognition. And so truly to exemplify Jesus in servanthood, we need to be submissive and obedient to all authority, whether that is in the workplace the home and within the church where God has appointed leaders over us. Hebrews 13 to 17 says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. As those who must give an account, let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. And what does unprofitable mean for us if we do not obey those who rule over us? As Jesus instructs us, it means we gain absolutely nothing from it. Servanthood is about being selfless. Serving God by serving others takes our time, it takes our energy, our resources, but a servant will be determined to serve regardless of the cost. So we need to be determined to serve. And a great servant is driven to serve out of a love for God because of everything that God has done for him. He has forgiven us. He has saved us for all eternity. He has washed us clean from sin. And when you fully understand what the gift of salvation has done for you, it will drive you to serve out of a heart full of gratitude and thanksgiving to God. I would recommend the book of Romans to really get to grips with what salvation truly means, means for us. And when we know that we're truly loved by God and forgiven by God, our hearts will drive us to serve out of love for people. Jesus commands us to love one another. And as he has loved us and he has washed our feet in turn, we are to love and to serve others. 
When we serve God first out of the right heart attitude, using the gifts and the abilities that he has given us, then the church will be built up in love. As it as servanthood enables the church to function as it should. The Bible tells us we are one body, the church, with many parts. We all have a role to play. We are all servants. And at the heart of Coastal Community Church is the vision. This is the vision that is so great at Coastal Community Church because, you know, and this vision is true. This is what happens. Find God, connect with others and discover your purpose. So it's find God, connect with others and discover your purpose. And servanthood is one of the key ways in which we can begin to discover God's purposes for our lives. In the Amplified Bible in Romans 12 verse 3 it says, For the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has apportioned each to each a degree of faith and a purpose designed for service. When you step out and start to serve God, he begins to reveal his purposes for you. But first you need to start serving. You don't need to wait until God confirms he has called you to be a missionary to China and then provide you with the plane ticket to start serving him. No, serving where you are now and serving where the need is. And as you do this, God will start to unfold his plans for you, because as you walk in service to the Lord, he will determine your steps. And as a great example of this, in last week's sermon, Paul Wright shared about how before he moved to Devon and joined Coastal Church, that he had previously been to Bible College and had pastored his own church. And upon joining Coastal, he said to Andrea Mock, how can I serve at Coastal? They said to Paul, you can put the chairs away. So he did. And then he went on to join the tech team and even did a stint on the amazing coffee team. Now, did Paul turn around and say to Mark and Andrea, our senior pastors, when they suggested that he could serve in these areas, I'm not doing that, I am an ordained minister? No, of course he didn't. He just served where the need was. And as he stepped out and served God where the need was, God's purposes for Paul in Coastal Church started to unfold. And now Paul is our pastoral leader. He teaches the gospel and leader of a myriad of other things in the church too. Because at the core of a leader is a servant heart. And as those in authority over you start to see your attitude and character, then they will move you into areas that fall in line with the gifts and abilities that God has given you. Something I hear all the time at Coastal is character before calling. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to make our heart soft and pliable, to chip away at the hard parts where character needs developing so we can walk in humility and submission. Someone once said, to be a truly great leader, you first need to be a truly great servant. And when you are in a leadership position, then you will only come to realise that all leadership is, is about serving people. And when I first joined Coastal, I knew I wanted to serve in the church. I wasn't sure what area to serve in. Andrea suggested the coffee team. And I previously served on the children's team, but I wanted to try something else. And I was new to the church, quite shy. And I really, to be honest, I just, I didn't want that much interaction with people. So I said to Andrea that I would give the coffee team a go, but only if another lady from church I knew would do it with me. And at that season in my life, serving the coffee on the coffee team and talking to people meant I had to step out of my comfort zone to do it. I actually didn't think that I would even like it, but I was determined to serve one way or another. And I found that I really started to enjoy it. And in the end, I ended up leading the coffee team and the welcome team. And then eventually I went on to become a connect group leader. And becoming a connect group leader again meant, meant stepping outside of my comfort zone. But when we are in that place and we feel the stretch of where God wants us to be, rather than where we feel comfortable or even capable, God will grow us because he has been preparing us. So serving in Coastal for me has been one of the catalysts to my own growth as a Christian.
And maybe today God is calling you to start serving in the church. And within Coastal, there are many areas that you can serve in. There's the coffee team, the welcome team. There's the children's work, pastoral care. There's the prayer team. And there are many, many other more areas that you can serve in. So if you would like to step out and start serving God, then why not get in contact with Coastal? You could speak to one of the leaders or have a look on the church website and email them and they will hook you up with a leader of one of the teams. And I'd just like to finish by um, saying a prayer for you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you that in, within Coastal Community Church there are many, many great servants of God that spend their time and their energy serving you. And I just pray for all of those that have listened to this message today and for all of those who want to step out in servanthood, but it means it will be going outside of their comfort zone. I pray for them, Holy Spirit, that you would just fill them with boldness and strength and that you would encourage them, Lord, encourage them to step out for you and to serve and I pray, Lord, for those that are serving in the church, Father God, that you would reveal to them more and more the gifts and abilities that they have, that they can use for service for you. But I pray, Father God, for all of us, that you will help us to develop our characters so that we can walk in humility, so that we don't walk in any pride. Help us to be submissive and obedient to those that lead over us. And I just ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.